is for education and entertainment purposes only. Please consult with your health care provider before making any changes to your health. Hey beautiful soul, it's Jacqueline here from the Lost Labia Chronicles where I talk about all things lichen sclerosis. So if you are looking to empower yourself with information, acceptance, and reclaiming your life with lichen sclerosis, please subscribe to this channel and keep on watching this video. And if you have a loved one or friend, or family member with lichen sclerosis, and you want to learn more about the disease so that you can better support them in their lichen sclerosis journey, then please share this channel with them and keep on watching. Okay, so in today's video, I am going to be talking about vulvar moisturizers, aka emollients. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk about what they are, how to use them, and why they are so important for us with lichen sclerosis. Um, and then in part two of this video, I'm going to do like a mini review, sit down with me, and I'm going to kind of go through the different products I use, talk about what I like about them, uh, what I don't like about them, so on and so forth. So I do keep forgetting to let you know that I am now including timestamps in these videos. So if you click on the description box, it will have a timestamp section. And if you want to skip ahead to a certain section, you just have to click that timestamp and it's going to take you there. So yes, I finally remembered to say it. Um, all right. So uh, before I dive into that, if you find the information in this video helpful um, or you learn something new, please give this video a like. Please consider subscribing. And of course, if you have any questions, then please drop them in the comment section below. I am always happy to answer your questions. And that's it. Let's hop right on into it. Okay, so if you're anything like me, then you probably never heard of the word emollient before until you were diagnosed with lichen sclerosis, unless you work in the skincare and cosmetic industry, or if you live in a French speaking region in the world. All right, so a, an emollient is essentially a moisturizer. It could be a cream, um, a salve, a balm, an oil that's used to help moisturize, protect, soften, and lubricate the skin. Think of it kind of just like a moisturizer or a serum that you would use on your face, but for your other face down there, uh, your private face, as Dr. Sin would call it. And if you don't know what I am talking about, I highly recommend that you check out an amazing interview with Dr. Sin by Lichen Sclerosis Podcast. In that um, episode, they discuss all things of all of our lichen sclerosis grooming. So, you know, should you wax, should you laser? Go check that out. It's an amazing interview. Um, I will have that linked in the description box below. But yeah, so it is essentially a moisturizer for your private face, for your vulva and it works to help moisturize, lubricate, and protect the skin. Okay, cool, it's a moisturizer. Why should I use it? Good question. All right, so let's talk a bit about why vulvar emollients are super important to use if you have lichen sclerosis. Now, normal, like non-lichen sclerosis skin will naturally produce oils in that area that will help lubricate and moisturize the area. However, lichen sclerosis skin is a little bit different. Um, I have a video entitled, Does Lichen Sclerosis Thicken or Thin the Skin? If you haven't watched that, I highly recommend you check that video out. I will leave a card here, I think. I think it's there. It's probably gonna be the other way. Anyways, I will leave that card there. But essentially, lichen sclerosis skin gets thickened. It's scarred and sclerotic and fibrotic and so it's not the same as normal skin. Now the gold standard treatment for lichen sclerosis is topical corticosteroids and these work very 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 well at controlling the inflammation and slowing the progression of the disease as well as managing symptoms. However, um, using steroids can dry out the skin a bit. So it's really important when you're not applying the steroid to apply a moisturizer to make sure that things are staying, you know, soft and supple and just nice and lubricated down there because I suffer from dryness down there and it's just not really a pleasant <laughs> feeling at all. So yeah. 
Okay. Um, and then, you know, another thing is that lichen sclerosis skin is also prone to kind of tearing and fissures. So we really want to keep a protective layer down there to, you know, sometimes if you have tearing or a fissure um, and you urinate, it can be really painful. It can sting. So that can kind of help with the stinging, help with some of the discomfort that can come with lichen sclerosis skin, especially when the lichen sclerosis um, is a very active. So adding a vulvar emollient for these reasons can be super beneficial for you. And um, it can also help um, prevent fusing in combination with a good treatment such as steroids because we also need to reduce the inflammation. But, um, and I talk about this in my video on terminology when we discuss fusing and stuff. So again, I'll leave a card um, and you can check that out. But when our skin starts to fuse, before it fuses, it starts getting really sticky and tacky and sticks together. So by adding that kind of protective barrier, we're making it harder for that skin to kind of stick and fuse. Think about like scotch tape and then pouring um, water or oil on it, right? It's going to have a lot, you're going to have a lot of a harder time to stick that piece of scotch tape to something and have it actually adhere if there's like, if it's coated in oil. So these are some of the reasons why it's super important to consider using a vulvar emollient with lichen sclerosis. Okay, so that was a long version. I'm gonna give you a super short, super concise, what are the pros of using a vulvar emollient? I'm gonna pop that up on the screen. Feel free to pause and take a screenshot. So the pros of using a vulvar emollient are, provides moisture to the vulvar skin, helps soften the vulvar skin, can help protect the vulvar skin from irritants such as urine, helps soothe irritated skin, reduces friction, which can cause tears, fissures, and irritation, and in conjunction with a treatment plan such as corticotopical steroids or topical corticosteroids, it can help reduce fusing by making it more difficult for vulvar parts to stick together. So, <laughs> Adding an emollient to your treatment plan and to your care routine has a lot of benefits if you have lichen sclerosis, and especially if you suffer from dryness on top of already having LS, which is something I definitely had. Um, I definitely experienced a lot of dryness in the past. I use daily, I use my emollient every day, and I no longer feel that issue, so that's awesome. But these are some reasons why you should definitely consider adding one into your routine. So in part two, in a follow-up to this video, I am going to review some of my favorite products uh, when it comes to vulvar um, emollients. And, um, you know, I'm gonna kind of like, it's gonna be like a fun kind of chit chat. I'll kind of pull them all out and kind of do a little demo and, you know, tell you what I like about them, what I don't like about them. But um, in the interim, uh, you might be wondering like, okay, so this sounds really good. What should I be using as a vulvar emollient? So here are some suggestions. I don't use them all. These are just recommendations from the communities that I am a part of. So there is coconut oil, castor oil, olive oil. There's emu oil. Some folks like to use borage oil, um, CBD or hemp oil. And then there are more like combinations. So there's a rescue bomb from Sweet Spot Labs. There is Yes Oil Based. There is uh, Clio by Demiva. There is, uh, what else is there? Oh, of course, there's V Magic. Some folks like MU Aid. Um, then there are also thicker options that uh, act as more of a barrier. Um, so those would be things like Vaseline or Aquaphor. Um, some folks uh, use CeraVe. Uh, just the cream, they'll use that. So there are definitely a lot of options. Please let me know in the comments below what you use, what you don't like, what you like. Um, if you don't use an emollient, if you're gonna start, uh, let me know in the comments below. But I will go and do a more deeper dive into the products that I use and what I like about them in the next video. Okay, so let's talk about what to look out for when shopping for a vulvar emollient. So there are so many benefits to using a vulvar emollient and the side effects are super minimal, but there are still some things that you wanna be mindful of. First, 
any product that you put on your vulva could cause an allergic reaction. So that is something to definitely be mindful of. Um, and in being mindful of that, you definitely want to do a patch test. I'm going to talk about a patch test in the next section. So if you're not sure what I mean by that, definitely keep on watching. The second one is to be mindful of ingredients and when possible, try to choose products with the least amount of ingredients possible. Now, this isn't to say that products with a lot of ingredients are bad. It's just that if you're trying to determine what is causing a reaction, it's really hard to do that when there's 20 ingredients. Whereas if you put coconut oil on and you have a reaction, you know 100% that you cannot tolerate coconut oil. And then any product that includes coconut oil as an ingredient, you know to avoid that product. Three, and building on that, is to use a symptom tracker, especially in the beginning. I'm going to link a free symptom tracker that was created by Kathy from Lichen Sclerosis Podcast. It is, a, you can use it in um, Google Sheets or you can use it in Excel and it is fully customizable so you can use it to track whatever symptoms or products you want. I like to track uh, every time I use a new product on my vulva, I like to put it in there just so I have some data and a record and I can also see, you know, did I have a reaction? Did I not have a reaction? Any kind of important feedback like that. And the fourth thing to consider when you're shopping for an emollient is cost. Um, let's face it, unfortunately, these products in most countries are not handed to you for free. They aren't covered by healthcare or insurance, and some of them can be quite pricey. Um, so cost is something, you know, know, know your budget, know what you can afford and work within that range. Um, there are definitely, the more affordable options tend to be the pure oils, so coconut oil, olive oil, things you can get in a grocery store typically. Um, there are some oils that are more pricey, so hemp CBD oil, uh, emu oil can be a little bit more pricey, but they still tend to be on the cheaper side compared to products like V Magic or, um, what was the other one, MU Aid, that one is quite pricey as well for the small jar that you get. But again, this all depends on your finances and what you can afford. So again, that is just the fourth thing to be mindful of when shopping for vulva emollients. Okay, so let's talk about patch testing. This is super important and I personally always do a patch test every time I put a new product on my vulva. So a patch test is essentially you. We're gonna take our handy little Sweet Swat Loves um, puppet here. Um, essentially, you're just going to take a small amount of product and test it on a small area of the vulva instead of just taking the product and putting it everywhere. Because if you have a reaction, now that's going to be everywhere, right? And like RLS symptoms, they're already miserable. You don't want to add more fuel to the fire and add just like more pain and more discomfort. So if you're going to try something, small area first. So I will typically also, in addition to doing this at the same time, I put like everything into the symptom tracker that I mentioned earlier. So if I'm going to start a new product, let's just say for the purpose of this video, if I'm going to try Clio by Demiva, I'm going to put that into a column that I'm using this. Um, and then I'll put like day one, no reaction, day two, no reaction, day three, let's say there's a reaction, then I log it. Basically, I just want all the data there so that I know kind of which products work and which products don't. Okay, so how to do a patch test. So you basically are gonna take a really small amount of product, like I'm talking like pea size, like a little chocolate chip. Think the amount of steroid that you'd use when you put your steroids on, that amount small. And I'll typically apply that small amount to kind of the mons pubis area for the first day. And then I wait a day. And if there's no reaction, then on the third day, I will take again a small, small little portion. And again, instead of slathering it all over the vulva, I will just do like the labia minora on one side. I'll do a little bit here. And again, then I'll wait and see, okay, is there a reaction? If there's, if there's no reaction, I'll wait a couple days just to be sure. And then by about a week of doing, you know, different little patch testings, I kind of feel like, okay, we're good. And then I feel comfortable putting it all over the vulva. 
So that's how I do a patch test and I definitely recommend you do that for every new product that you get. And then another piece of recommendation or another piece of recommendation, like what does that even mean? Another piece of advice I have is to only use one product of it at a time when you're doing these tests, because let's say you get four of all our emollients, which is totally cool. You can totally do that. <laughs> um, you don't want to put all four at the same time because then it's going to be really hard if you do have a reaction to know which product is actually responsible for that reaction and which isn't and then you might actually throw out all four when really the culprit was only this one vulvar emollient so definitely do your patch tests and one product at a time all right, so we know why vulvar emollients are important. We know um, what to look out for when shopping for vulvar emollients, and we know about doing a patch test. Now, how do you apply your vulvar emollient? So there's no hard and fast rule for this. And again, this is based more off lived experience. Uh, this doesn't come from the medical literature. There aren't really many studies that uh, are currently out there where they're looking at, you know, vulvar emollients and lichen sclerosis. So this is from a lived experience perspective. Just wanted to flag that. Okay, now that I have. So when you're applying your vulvar emollients, uh, assuming that you've passed the patch test and there's no reaction, you can, you know, and it, this will kind of depend on the product, but maybe a pump or two, right? With Clio by Demiva, which is a product I'll talk about in my next video. Um, I usually do like two pumps and I put it like in my hands like this and then I apply it to the vulva. So I'll apply around the clitoral hood, the clitoris, the labia minora, then I'll go down into like the perineum area. Sometimes I do a little bit of the labia majora, but like, meh. I mostly, I'm mostly focused on this, this kind of area. So I'll just kind of rub it in over there, nothing to it. Um, and that's just kind of how you apply it. Now, how often you apply it, I think this really depends on the individual. So in my case, I apply anywhere from two to five times a day, and it really just depends on what I'm doing that day. So if it's a day where I'm like sitting on a couch binging anime for the day, then I'm not going to apply as often. I might just apply once in the morning and that's it, or maybe once in the morning and then like once in the afternoon. Um, but on a day where I know I'm going to be super active, um, let's say I have one appointment in one area of this city and an appointment in the other, well, I walk everywhere. So that's a lot of walking. Um, so that'll be a day where I apply it a little bit more, or if I'm going to the gym, you know, if I'm doing a lot of activity, I tend to kind of ramp it up a little bit. And again, I don't go, like I don't apply a super ton, just a, just a little bit, just to make me feel like, okay, nice and soothed and moisturized down there. Um, so that is how I, uh, that's how I do mine. Now this last note is super, super important. Um, you do need to be mindful of when you apply it, um, with respect to your steroid or calcineurin inhibitors. So if you're using steroids, if you're not just disregard this part, but if you are using steroids, you don't, you want to basically wait 30 minutes to an hour after applying your steroids. Basically, you just really want to give the medication time to get down to that basement layer where the inflammation lies. So just wait about 30 minutes to an hour after you apply your steroids and then it's fair game you can apply as much as you want personally i apply my steroids in the evening it's actually like the last thing i do before i go to bed so i go to bed super early so like at nine ish i'm in the bath and then by like 9 30 i'm like putting that on and i am like going to bed um so okay well i don't stay in the tub for 30 minutes but you know what I'm saying. Um, so because it's the last thing I do when I go to bed, I kind of don't have to think about that timing at all. I just put the steroids on, go to bed, wake up the next day, and then I just um, apply my emollient as I will. So anywhere from one to five times a day, depends on how dry you feel, how much discomfort you feel, um, super important. And then uh, apply anywhere to the vulvar area is fair game, there's no worries there. And then just be mindful, wait 30 minutes to an hour after applying your steroids. All right, so this wraps up this video on vulvar emollients. So the focus of this video was kind of getting you familiar with why you want to include a vulvar emollient if you have lichen sclerosis, 
um, what to look out for when shopping for uh, an emollient, how to do a patch test, and how to use your vulvar emollient. Now, in part two of this video, I'm going to have a sit down with y'all and I'm going to take out, you know, everything that I use as a vulvar moisturizer and um, just kind of have like a free flowy kind of chat with you uh, through the screen, of course, and kind of show the product, show how they look on the hand, kind of how I apply them. Well, no, whoa, not how I apply them. Okay, I would get like banned from YouTube in a second. Um, but yeah, so I'll do like a mini product review slash chat about products I tried and didn't like and then products that I love. I'll definitely um, highlight my ride or dies. So if you're curious about that, I know I definitely get a lot of questions about that. So stay tuned for part two. Um, of course, if you found the information in this video helpful, if you learned something new, if you appreciate my content, please help support my channel by subscribing, by giving me a like and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. All right. That is it for this one. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.